JJ here and we are now on the last part of our video creating mobile app using Flutterflow. Now we will work on the remaining parts of our application and I will show you how to use conditional actions in Flutterflow so let's begin. And let's clean up our editor all right. So next thing is we need to add a, a new screen for the for the task or let's say for the meditate. So the idea here is on every task, we need to create a screen because different tasks will have a different content. So it will be difficult if you will make your one screen dynamic depending on the selected here. We just maybe it's easier to just create a multiple screen and then just using condition we navigate to those to that screen depending on what is been what has been selected. So First, we need to create a screen for the meditate. Let's in the page selection. Let's click this add new page, and then let's click content. Let's see if there's something we can add. I don't feel like using anything here. Maybe let's go back to all, and then let's keep select the blank. All right. Maybe let's give let's give it a name of meditate. Meditate. All right. Let's click the create new to create a blank screen. There you go. It's a blank screen. Let's click this up header. And then let's change the style. Let's select the third one. And then let's give it a name of meditate. All right. All right. So let's click the back button and let's select the navigate back in the action. So on top, let's go select the navigate back. All right. And then maybe what we can do here is once the user click the meditate, it will show her, it will show to him or her this screen. Maybe a video will show instructing him how to meditate so using flutterflow you can embed a video a youtube video so to do that let's look for the youtube oops all right youtube player let's select that and let's drag and drop that here okay so maybe for the video it's same with the image you just need the URL of the video, so maybe let's go to YouTube. And then let's go to meditate. Five minutes, meditation for five minutes. Let's click this and then copy the URL. And then let's close this because we don't want to get copyrighted. <laughs> okay, and then let's go back here let's change the url of this uh, of this video actually you can make this dynamic but uh, it's up to you totally up to you it's our flutter flow is very customizable we can have it uh, you know change every day by just changing the data in the collection that's fine all right and then next is we will add a button to say if it's completed so going back to the UI builder let's select the button component or button widget all right so this is the button maybe let's add a few padding here maybe like maybe 30 30 is enough and then Let's change the name of this one to completed. All right. And then what we want to do is when this completed is click, we want a pop up to appear, you know, encouraging the user that you have successfully completed this task. So the next thing is we will add a new page. So go to the page selector. And I saw one, a perfect for that. Uh, for that uh, notification screen 
So let's go to the content. And then, at the bottom, there's this congratulations success page. So let's give it a name of meditation. Meditation completed. All right. And then let's select the success page. So it says congrats. Basically, there's this icon here, uh, animation uh, showing a check mark. I'll show you that later. So it says congrats. Maybe for this text, let's change this to more to more appropriate one. Uh, let's say here that congrats, you are. One step closer to healthy, healthy living. All right, I think that sounds encouraging. And then let's center this one because it's a, li a little bit uh, aligned to the left. Let's go to the text align and then click center, align center. There you go. And then here in the go home. It's not appropriate. I want the user to touch anywhere on this screen and then he or she will be navigated to the dashboard screen. All right, so let's delete this one. And then let's click this uh, column. So I want, what I want is when, when the user click this, when the user click this uh, screen, he will now redirect it to the dashboard screen with the task selected previously with the task now check or displaying an a check icon all right so first is we need to add an action here it's not a backend query because we're not querying anything so it's an action so there's a two action here. One is for updating the database. And then the second action is navigation. That's why we need to use the flow editor. And then let's click the add action. So the first action is to update the database. So in the database, let's select the update document. And the document that we need to update is the user as the user task so as you can see the user task is not here that's why we need to first close this and go back here in the add back and query and then we need to relate which is the which is which collection we need to update all right so let's click the add back and query let's select the query collection and then the collection we need to update is the user task. But uh, here it should be a single document because we just want to update the meditation task. And then the filter will be it should the task should be equal to the name of the task, which is we know the name of the task, which is the meditate. So if there's a different screen, a success screen for the waking up early, we will query the collection again, the user task collection. But instead of checking the task name for meditate, we will check that for the wake up early. So those things or early bird, I believe early bird. I use early bird as the name of the task. So meditate, everything looks good. Let's click confirm ah one thing uh, you might notice by mistake is that your screen is not showing that's because maybe you this because this is by default tick saying that if there's no result query result retrieve from the collection basically the widget will disappear but we don't want to do that so let's select that but uh, ideally there should be no scenario that we will retrieve an empty records here if that's the case then we need to either update our collection for maybe because it's uh, bad data 
all right so let's click confirm let's click here and then go back to action let's open again the action now i'm expecting that i should see the user task and there you go the user task is selected and then it says here the reference user task because it's related to the user let's click that and then we can now update the field that we need to update which is the task that is completed and done and then the completion date so for the is completed it's just a matter of true or false so let's set it to true there you go because uh, this is for the success or congratulation screen and then after setting this to true let's add let's add click let's click this add field for the completion date and then the completion date is this one and then what's the value of the completion date the value of the completion date should be here in the global properties this is the set the property of your device so you will see here the name of the user currently currently log in the current time the device location and then what if this is an android or an ios is it on dark mode or, or light mode and even the if the on screen is visible so i'm currently concerned only with the current time so let's select that and then after setting the two va the value for these two fields is completed and completion date now we're good now let's add an action to navigate us back to the dashboard we can choose uh, navigate back reason is it will return to the task that we that you know the meditate screen all right looks good and then now let's go back to the dashboard let's add an icon here let's see where we can add that icon for indicating if we already completed this task this task here in the ui builder search for icon uh, this one let's drag that one here there you go perfect so every task here will have this icon let's click this icon and instead of this setting icon let's change this to check uh, let's select this check circle there you go and then instead of black maybe it's better for this check to be green so let's click this icon color and then let's select green there you go now we don't want this icon to always displaying that's why we need to go to the property and and as you can see there's this conditional visibility let's enable this and then this is where we can set the logic for this one and then the value for this will be coming from the is completed but we cannot use is completed actually because what will happen is uh, it will always going to display uh, the green icon even it is on the next day that's why we need to use this condition condition is like a checking of a specific condition and then displaying or resulting you the outcome depending on the if the logic has been satisfied so let's select the single condition so what we need to compare is the first value which is the first value should be the user task a completion date it's not empty definitely and well we need to change the timestamp format of this one to maybe we don't need the time just dmy so it's the day month and year okay and we need to compare if this is equal to the current day to day and uh, from value let's go to 
global properties because that's where the current time is. Let's click the current time. And then let's click the time timestamp format because we don't need the actual time. We just need the date. Let's click this one. All right. So what will happen now is it will compare if the existing completion date, if it exists or if it's equal to the current time. So if it's not, then the icon that we added won't show. All right. So let's click confirm and let's try that. Let's run this application. Let's click run and let's wait for a few minutes. All right. So our screen loaded without error. Let's zoom in, zoom out a little bit. All right. So this is has been added. Now let's try to, oh, we forgot to click an add button for us to redirect us to that meditative screen. So let's go back again in the Flutter Flow editor here. So let's go to the outline because I want to select instead of row, I want to select the container. Now, when the container is selected, we want this to navigate us to the Meditate screen. So, on top, let's select the Navigate to and then let's select the Meditate. Alright, let's leave everything as it is. There you go. And let's test it. Alright, so we're back. Let's zoom out and now let's test it. Let's click meditate. Now we're navigated. So technically how our user will use this application is he or she will watch this video after watching it. As you can see, it's playing. He can or she can just press this completed. And the pop-up will appear, which is not yet uh, displaying. And then let's do that. Let's close this screen and then let's go to the meditate screen. So let's add a button here in the meditate. So let's put an action. The action here should uh, be a navigate. Navigate to med. Nope. Navigate to. Meditate completed. All right. Then let's run it. Okay. Now let's test it again. Let's click this meditate. Now let's assume that it's already been played and let's click completed. There you go. The congrats screen is showing. It says here you are now one step closer to healthy living. Now let's click anywhere on this screen. And there you go. The checkbox is now displayed. Cool, right? So technically what will happen, but I'm not going to test it, is if, let's say the next day, because of the check we did, uh, next day, actually after past midnight, this uh, checkbox will disappear because of the check we added previously, checking that completion date. So now, the last thing we need to do here is we want to actually delete. So let's say we want to add another one, but later on we realize that, oh, I don't want this one, this task to be here. So there should be a way for a user to delete it. And I'm thinking maybe we can add it by doing a long press here. And then a pop-up will appear. So, and then another thing is, as you can see, whatever I press, it's going to this screen. So maybe we can also fix that later on, but that should be quick. Now let's work on the delete of the task. Let's close this 
and in the page selection let's go to the dashboard now here let's go to the outline for us to be able to select the container instead so here in the action uh, we need now to use the editor and then here we already added on top but now there should be a different logic when we use a, a long press so let's click this long press and then now it's still empty let's add an action so what we want to do is there should be a pop-up so here we can scroll at the bottom in the alert section and here in the alert section you have a lot of options like an alert haptic feedback or play sounds what we need to do is an uh, is to display an alert dialog and then this is the alert dialog action screen we need not in uh, not an informational dialog but instead a confirm dialog so there should be a yes or no to avoid you know user mistakenly mistakenly remove this uh, task then the title is let's give it a name of remove task so this can be also dynamic but uh, in this case there's no reason for us to do so so in the message let's add here that do you want to remove this task and then in the dismiss it should be cancel and then the confirm it says confirm okay we leave the basically these are the buttons so we leave them as as it is and then let's oops let's close this so that's the first one and then another thing here is when we need we need to add a logic depending on the action so we need to open again the editor so i'm still on the long press now depending on the ax the answer uh, there should be a different action so for example if the user select confirm we should delete it in the database in the user task collection so that's why we need to select here the add conditional so as you can see uh, flutter flow action were able to was able to immediately detect that the value for this will be coming from the alert dialog box that's why it says confirmation dialog response and then if it's true or the we click the confirm then there is an action which will which we will add for us to delete that specific task in the database so let's go to the database and then delete and then here and the unset let's click the user task document and then here let's select the reference so after we added the the action here in the if we click confirm what we will do is we need to terminate this logic so it's either we add the terminate here or terminate on both end. So let's click this add action and then add terminate. And then same with the false. So if if it's false or the user cancel the dialog box, then definitely the logic should be the user should stay still in the dashboard screen. All right. So now that's added. Now let's close this and let's test this application. Let's test the delete. So let's go to the run and then run the application again. All right, it's now running. Let's zoom in. Okay, so now let's try to delete this early bird task. So let's long press this one and then the pop-up is now displaying. So it says here, remove task. Do you want to remove this task? Yes. Let's click confirm. And there you go. It's getting deleted now. So if you want to add again, go here and then click this one. 
right there you go okay now we're closing to finishing our app what we will do next is as you notice whichever we click here it's navigating to the meditate screen what we want to do is if the button if the task selected is meditate that's the only time we will be redirected and then later on you know in the future we can just add a new logic that this early bird will go to its uh, corresponding screen but for the meantime let's work on the meditate okay so let's close this test screen and now let's go to the task so let's click this again and select container so what we would like to do is let's open the editor let's go back on the on top and then here as you can see it immediately goes to the navigate now what we will do instead of navigating immediately we will put condition first before navigating so let's go this we can just oh or maybe we can delete everything so let's delete this action and then let's add conditional action there you go and then here what we need to check is the user task value so here let's check the user task document oops before that we need to because if you do that basically you're putting the, the boolean value here and then that's what we that's what going to be evaluated so that's why we need to add a condition first this is the if else condition so let's select the single condition now you have the if the if condition here so the first value that we will check is the user task document and then let's check the task name so the task name should be equal to the first name is should it should be specifically equal to the word meditate and then if that satisfy the condition that's the only time we will be navigated to the meditate screen navigate to meditate there you go now if let's say you have multiple screen what we can do is you can just add, add another condition here and then check the task name and then if the task name let's say satisfied a different task name and then it should navigate you again to another a different screen so that's how we can work on this so there's a lot of way we can work on conditional navigating but here i think this is the simplest thing to do so that's what, what we're doing here so now maybe i don't want to i don't have the screen yet for the early bird so i'm just going to terminate it so I, we will not put any redirect on the early bird task let's have it work only for the navigate to the meditate screen all right so let's test it so here in the editor let's click run then run button all right our application is now running zoom in again so mean more all right so now let's click the meditate so as you can see it's still navigating to the meditate screen let's go back now let's try the early birds the expectation here is it should do nothing okay yep as you can see i'm clicking now it doesn't do anything so yeah basically that's how you control the navigation so basically this is our application so as a you know for your exercise you can make this article dynamic it's easy because you can just create a you can just create a collection for this article and then so every day if you want to add a new collection or new article you just insert a new one here and then delete the old one so that's how you do it so it's easy actually so yeah i think that's it for this video so hopefully you learned something from me today and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so that's it thank you and have a good day